afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Pro Wrestling Talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. One second, I had to turn my phone off. So, for this video, I want to discuss two things. First off, I'm going to give my review of the recent TJPW All Rise 23 show. Uh, that actually happened earlier this morning uh, in my time zone. And I want to talk about another tournament, because this is pro wrestling tournament season. A new rookie tournament that is getting ready to start up for TJPW as well. That's going to be, you know, going through, you know, starting in, pretty much starting in uh, November and it's going to finish out in December. But, uh, yeah, tournament for the rookies. Uh, not a huge tournament, but pretty decent for to account for the rookies that are currently in TJPW. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get started with TJPW All Rise 23, which took place uh, October 27th, which is today. Um, this was at the Corcoran Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Um, and like I said, for my time zone, this happened like, uh, I believe it was like six in the morning. But we had ourselves, we had a handful of good matches. Uh, we had two title matches and even a number one contendership match. So this was pretty action packed, very entertaining. So let's go ahead and let's get started with the first match of All Rise. Here we go. So we started off All Rise with a trios match, uh, definitely showcasing the rookies. So team number one, we had Himawari, Runa Okubo, and Wakana Uehara, taking on team number two, made up of Haru Kazashiro, Shino Suzuki, and Toga. I have to say, overall, this was a really good opening match. It actually lasted longer than I thought it was going to last. And I felt like that was really good to be able to showcase all six of these ladies. Because all six of these ladies are actually going to be in the upcoming rookie tournament that I was mentioning at the beginning of this video. So, this is a nice match to showcase all six. And I felt like all six did a really great job. Uh, this match had a good time uh, from start to finish. And, you know, I think it definitely served as a taste of things to come for the rookie tournament in November. So, overall, really good match. Uh, it came down to Himawari picking up the victory for her team via submission, uh, locked up Haru Kazashiro in a single leg crab, made her tap out. So Himawari, Wakana Uehara, Runo Okubo walk away with the victory, but a great showing from all six ladies, and I definitely look forward to when they compete in the rookie tournament. But really solid opening match. Solid opening match. All right. Let's move on to the next match, which was another solid one. We had a tag team match. Team number one is made up of Ryo Mizunami and Yuki Aino. Taking on team number two, made up of Maki Ito, the cutest in the world, and Kaya Toribami. Now, I felt like when I was talking about my preview of this match in the, the previous video, I really felt like this was a pretty balanced match. I mean, you know, Ryo Mizunami, Yuki Aino, Kaya Toribami, Maki Ito, I felt like this was pretty even. Um, I know Yuki Aino is a little bit more of a veteran compared to Kaya Toribami, but still, I felt like just overall, with what they've been doing in TJPW, I felt like this was a an even matchup. And sure enough, it definitely went back and forth, even to the point where Ryo Mizunami made Maki Ito cry. 
and um, which I figured was going to happen because you know those two have faced each other before, even back in AEW. So that's no surprise there. But I have to say, I did not expect the outcome, but I'm actually happy with it. I'm very happy with it. Yuki Aino actually picked up the victory for her and Ryo Mizunami, pinning Kayatori Bami after hitting her with a Venus DDT. And yeah, Yuki Aino, Ryo Mizunami, pick up the victory. And like I said, I've been very high on Yuki Aino, especially ever since uh, her recent opportunity at the International Princess Championship. While she came up short against Rika Tatsumi, put up a great fight, a really great fight. But, yeah, Yuki Aino, I hope at some point, uh, becomes a champion as well in TJPW. But, yeah, good solid match. Ryo Mizunami, Yuki Aino are your winners. Okay. Let's move on to our next match. Okay. We had the eight women battle royale to determine the new number one contender for the International Princess Championship currently held by Max the Impaler. Came down to Shoko Nakajima versus Rika Tatsumi versus Miyu Watanabe versus Yuki Kamifuku versus Mahiro Kiryu versus Suzume versus Aris Endo, versus Raku. Now, initially, initially, Shokonaka, no, excuse me, initially, Suzume and Mahiro Kiryu started off this match, and then, uh, little by little, the rest of the ladies uh, came into the match, like he had Shoko Nakajima, and then I believe after her was Rika Tatsumi, and then after her was Miyu Watanabe. Then, uh, or actually, no, I think Raku, Raku came in before uh, Miyu Watanabe. But uh, if I remember correctly, the last one to enter was uh, Yuki Kamifuku, now that I think about it. But at least all the ladies were in before there were any, uh, any eliminations. So... There was that. So anyway, let me go through the order of eliminations with this match. This was a very entertaining match, by the way, uh, from start to finish. Uh, like I said, all eight of these ladies, very worthy of being in this match. Anyway, here were the order of eliminations. So Miyu uh, pinned Suzume. So Suzume was eliminated first, unfortunately. Got hit by the hit with a teardrop and then pin for the one, two, three. And then both Miyu Watanabe and Rika Tatsumi were eliminated over the top rope at the same time. And then Yuki Kamifuku pinned uh, Aris Endo after hitting her with uh, a Famouser. Then Shoko Nakajima pins Yuki Kamifuku after a Hurricane Rana. Yeah, Hurricane Rana Frankensteiner pin. And then... What it what may have seemed like, uh, which also I believe my hero, I don't remember exactly. See what confused me. I don't remember exactly when she was eliminated, but she was definitely eliminated early. So if somebody can um, insert that in, I would appreciate that. But when it came down to it, Shoko Nakajima felt like everybody was eliminated but out of nowhere Raku comes back in because she was never pinned or thrown over the top rope and tried to take advantage to roll up and get some offense in on Shoko Nakajima but it wasn't quite enough and Shoko was able to eventually pin Raku with a Northern Light suplex thus your number one contender for the International Princess Championship is the big kaiju, Shoko Nakajima. So, she gets a crack at Max the Impaler. Whoo! That's going to be a tough test for the big kaiju. It's going to be a very tough test. Um, 
Now that I think of it, I think my hero Kiryu might have some might have tapped out when she was in that Cobra clutch by Arise Endo and um, everybody else was kind of in a chain Cobra clutch. That might have been when it happened. But uh, somebody correct me. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but the big kaiju is your number one contender. Uh, and you know what? This is this is pretty big for her because this means Shoko Nakajima has an opportunity to become a Grand Slam champion if she can def some way somehow defeat Max the Impaler. But we'll see. We shall see. But congratulations to the big kaiju, your new number one contender. Okay. Next match was definitely one that I was very hyped for, and it was extremely entertaining. Yes, indeed. We had the return of the Magical Sugar Rabbits. That's right. Their return together as a tag team in this tag team match. We had the Magical Sugar Rabbits of Mizuki and the returning Yuka Sakazaki taking on the team of Hyper Misao and Palm Harajuku, who came down to the ring with, like, party stuff. Had, like, party hats and, like, whipped cream and cake and all that. And even got a whole bunch of it on, on Yuka Sakazaki, which the setup for that was actually pretty funny. Which, I mean, when you have the combo of Hyper Misao and Palm Harajuku, you can't go wrong. Like, you can't go wrong at all. But this was a very entertaining match, had a good dose of comedy, and you know, the Magical Sugar Rabbits did not miss a beat at all. Like, seeing them both together, wrestling, doing double team moves, you know, trading offense. Like, I definitely am glad to see that this team is back together. Not only that, it has been said that Yuka Sakazaki is going to continue to compete in each of the upcoming shows for TJPW until December. I think it was about mid-December or early December, like the, the anniversary show. Because I believe she's going to do one more show after the TJPW anniversary show. And then she'll leave TJPW for the U.S. But... Overall, this was a solid match, a great dose of action, a great dose of comedy, and just Magical Sugar Rabbits back together again. And as a matter of fact, Yuka Sakazaki, the magical girl herself, picks up the victory for her team as she pinned Palm Harajuku after hitting the Magical Merry Go Round. So, good to see Yuka and Mizuki back together. Um, I know there were some fans out there that were thinking maybe they can become princess tag team champions one more time. Honestly, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. They, they've been the tag champs enough times. It, it's really not necessary. But that's just, that's just my opinion. But good solid match. Alright. Let's go on to our next match. And this was really good as well. Alrighty. Had a singles match uh, with former tag team partners. And I, I believe this right here may be Saki Akai's last match in TJPW. I believe. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But Saki Akai versus Yuki Arai. The Reiwa AA Cannons going at each other. Um, this was definitely a solid match. Um, I was... I was a little shocked because I was really thinking that Yuki Arai was going to take this one. And I felt like she really should have won this one. I mean, Saki Akai is about to retire next month. So... Good solid match, but yet Saki Akai still hit the Quizzle Call and pinned Yuki Arai for the 1 2 3. It was just really such a bummer. I really wanted to see Yuki Arai win this match. You know, 
it would have been a nice little send send off, especially for her to you know be able to get a big win over Saki Akai, because you know Saki Akai didn't need that win. She didn't need that win. Let's keep it real. She didn't need that win. So that's my whole thing with that. But a great sign of sportsmanship after the match between these two ladies, because like I said, they're both former uh, tag team champs. Not to mention, they they dethroned the Magical Sugar Rabbits to win those titles in the first place. So, you know. But, I hope Yuki Arai continues to get showcased and, and such, and that she'll get stronger. Because I, I really feel like there needs to be some, some more spotlight on her, for sure. But, good solid match. Okay. Y'all ready for some title matches? Let's do this. We're about to get into my favorite match of the whole card. Bam! This was for the Princess Tag Team Championships. As free Wi-Fi, the champions, Hikari Noah, now Kakuta, make their first defense against the up and rising karate sisters of Moka Miyamoto and Juria Nagano. Uh, a very solid, very fiery, challenging tag team. Now I have to say, this was a solid, solid match. And gotta gotta give credit to free Wi-Fi for the um the preemptive strike after the sportsmanship uh, of the match. And, you know, these two teams just went really back and forth. Like, both had a great amount of momentum as they traded offense. And, you know, this was, this was pretty big for now Kakuta, especially now that she's a champion, you know, in her first championship run of her entire pro wrestling career. Um... It was really good to see how well Free Y are being showcased as a as a strong tag team. And at the same time, Mocha and Juria definitely show why they have been a great partnership. You know, they've they went against each other plenty of times, but they are even stronger as a tag team. And even though they came up short, even though they came up short, I hopefully, hopefully they'll continue to showcase these two ladies as a tag team. I know Jerry Nagano is mainly a part-timer, but I really do hope they continue to showcase both these ladies as a tag team. But really love the striking ability, the submissions, just the, the offense that they poured on to free Wi-Fi, but free Wi-Fi were able to first dispose of Mocha Miyamoto hitting the 5G, and then now Kakuta, or uh, I'm sorry, Hikari Noah was able to put away Juria Nagano, despite her making a last second comeback with her striking offense, was not enough to put away Hikari Noah as Hikari Noah was able to defeat Jury and Nagano, pinned her with the Blizzard Suplex for the 1 2 3. And free Wi Fi. Hikari Noah, now Kakuta, are successful in their first defense of the Princess Tag Team Championships. So, congratulations to them. And like I said, Mocha and Jury, Jury and Nagano, they did an excellent job. And like I said, they'll get another shot, I'm sure, in the future. I just hope at some point that possibly Jury and Nagano will become full time because I still think that's the only chance she has to to become a champion. But I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But that's just my thoughts on that. Okay, and then the main event of TJPW All Rise 23 came down to this singles match. For the Princess of Princess Championship. As Miyu Yamashita in her fourth title reign of this championship 
makes her first defense of said title against Regina from Finland. Now, first off, I will say that uh, thankfully, because I thought this was going to be her first match, but she actually uh, did get some matches in before this match, leading up to this match. So that's good. I'm glad that they did that. So kudos to TJPW for at least giving her some matches before this title match. So good stuff there. But Regina really just fired away right from the jump onto Miyu Yamashita and really just wrecked her for, you know, at least the first half of this match. Whatever Miyu would throw at her, she would bounce back and just counter with more offense herself. This was a physical, very physical, hard-hitting match. But, you know, Miyu hung in there like the champion she is, like the ace of TJPW she is, and just kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting, was eventually able to put down the big Regina, even after kicking out of the finish, which is actually the name of her finishing move, you know, that spike tiger, tiger pile driver. Um, she kicked out of that and then eventually was able to put her down with a crash rabbit heed and then pinned her for the one, two, three. And Miyu Yamashita retains the Princess of Princess Championship. So great, great defense. The the ending, the post-match, that was pretty disgusting. Regina spitting in her hand after, you know, she offered to for a handshake and just spat in her hand. Ugh, that was just flat out nasty. But but yeah, that was your main event. Uh, but I but I have to say the Princess Tag Team Championship match was my favorite. Definitely my favorite on the card. But yeah, um, another good show. Like I said, not one of their huge shows, but still a good, solid show. What a good card. Had a really good card. I was digging it. And like I said, great first defenses from both me, Yamashita, and Free Wi-Fi, and... So glad to see the Magical Sugar Rabbits return. So, best of luck to Yuka Sakazaki to finish strong in TJPW with what uh, booking she has left before she gets ready to come on down to the United States. Okay. Before, before I talk about the rookie tournament, here's a quick word on the sponsor of this video, Game Beauty. Check them, check them out. As you continue to enjoy content here at Blitzball Champ Gaming, be sure you take a moment to check out Game Beauty. Beauty inspired by gaming. Game Beauty brings to you video game related makeup and cosmetic products. You have products such as eyeshadow palettes, elemental pearl highlighters, eyeshadow brushes, liquid eyeliner pens by Akidiris, and even non-makeup products like graphic tees. They even have special collaboration makeup kits such as this Persona 5 Heat Wave Brush Single, Metaverse Bundle, and even a Phantom Thieves Limited Edition Makeup Collection. Also remember that Game Beauty provides international shipping of $60 or more. And if you use the promo code BLITZBALLCHAMP, all in caps, 
you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that to your advantage. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Enjoy, and thank you. All righty, now let's discuss about the new upcoming TJPW Rookie Tournament, which is apparently called TJPW Next Gen or Next Gene, but yeah, the Next Generation Tournament 23. So TJPW Next Generation Tournament 23. All right, check this out. Here we go. So this is a tournament that's gonna showcase the rookies of TJPW, of Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. There will be six ladies, as you can see, six ladies for this tournament. All right, your six ladies, Shino Suzuki, you know, I'm going from left to right. So Shino Suzuki, Haru Kazashiro, Himawari, Toga, Runa Okubo, and Wakana Uehara. Those are your six rookies for this tournament. Now, just a note, both Shino Suzuki and Wakana Uehara have buys. So they are actually going to be competing in the semifinals, which leaves the other four ladies to compete in the first round. So, As you can see with the dates, the first round matchups will be on November 3rd. And your first round matchups will be Haru Kazashiro versus Himawari and Toga versus Runa Okubo. Okay, both of those matches will be on November 3rd. Now, the semifinals will be on November 19th, which Shino Suzuki will face the winner between Himawari and Haru, and Wakana Uehara will face the winner between Runa and Toga. And then the finals of this TJPW Next Generation Tournament 23 will be on December 1st, which I believe is also the anniversary We Are TJPW show. Yeah, actually, no, 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 no. That's, uh, actually, yes, it is. Yeah, it is, actually. We Are TJPW 10th anniversary. So the finals will be at the 10th anniversary show. Nice, nice. So, hey, I like it. I definitely like it. So, yeah, that is your schedule. And I'll put a link uh, to this uh, tweet in the description so that you uh, have a chance to, to look at it. But yeah, that's the information on this tournament. Now, out of these six ladies, who do I think has the best chance of winning? This is good. This is a good question. To be honest, This is, mm, this is really tough. This is really tough. So, the three that I could see winning this tournament, there's three in particular that I could see winning this tournament. I think it's going to either be Himawari, Toga, or Wakana Uehara. I think one of those three rookies will win this tournament. I, th I think one of those three ladies will, will win this tournament. Now, what would be nice is it would be nice if they get some sort of 
some sort of special prize or something like that, or maybe some sort of incentive that might lead to, you know, maybe a title shot. I mean, or not even that, but maybe like a trophy of some sort. But, I mean, it is a rookie tournament, so I guess I can't, I shouldn't really expect a title opportunity. But, at least this is a good opportunity to showcase these rookies and see who really will ascend to the next level. But then again, you, you never know. I mean, I think about the uh, women's breakout tournament in WWE NXT. And, you know, the woman that we're, that wins that tournament gets a contract for a title shot. So, I mean, hey, maybe they could do something like that with this tournament. You know, I just thought about that. Maybe they could do that with this tournament. But, but yeah. So, I'm thinking Himawari, Toga... Or Wakana Uehara will win this tournament. Those, those are my those are my picks. One of those three, I, I believe, will win it. Um, because, like I said, I think Himawari beats Haru, and I believe Toga will beat Runa. And then I could see Himawari beating Shino. So honestly, looking at the past, I think Himawari will be in the finals. Now, it would be pretty neat if it came down to Himawari and Wakana in the finals. That would actually be pretty cool. But I think this may be the tournament where Toga makes a deep run. So, we'll see. We'll definitely see. But looking forward to it. Looking really forward to it. And I think it's cool that the finals is going to be on the TJPW 10th anniversary show. I think that's awesome. But... That'll do it for uh, this video. Uh, don't forget to check out the link in the description for Game Beauty. And also, let me know what your thoughts were on TJPW All Rise 23. What did you think of the card? What did you think of the matches? Um, and how do you feel about Shoko Nakajima as your new number one contender for the International Princess Championship? And let me know your thoughts on the TJPW Next Generation Tournament 23. Uh, what do you think about the rookies in this tournament? Who's your pick to win the whole tournament? Let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For another Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the 2. My name is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.